I call David Bennett. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, it's a great pleasure to speak on the Kiwi Bank bill. And I think the first thing we need to look at is the role that Kiwi Bank plays. And, um, and Kiwi Bank is a part of the New Zealand Post Group, which is a state-owned enterprise. And as a state-owned enterprise, New Zealand Post has its own board. And that board, um, as we've heard mentioned, has some members on it that um, have had political experience. But the board essentially um, is the government's body for that organisation of New Zealand Post. And so the board of New Zealand Post make the government's decisions in relation to things like Kiwi Bank as one of its subsidiaries. And so ministers of the Crown themselves don't exactly direct SOE operations in the day-to-day -day sense. That's done through the management of the organisations, but also uh, the board has the governance role, not the actual um, ministers that are the shareholding ministers. So effectively, under um, the current structure of that organisation, the board has the ability to wholly or partly um, uh, divest uh, part of its asset in Kiwi Bank, as uh, the member that has raised this bill has made known. So that is one point that we need to be aware of. Another point is that the member is requesting a 75% um, threshold um, or of MPs or referendum to essentially um, allow any transfer um, wholly or part of that um, organisation. And I think the important part there is to look at is uh, what consistency or any precedent there may be um, for that approach. And, um, and it's very difficult to find any precedent in New Zealand uh, law that has that 75% uh, requirement. And I guess um, if you were looking at this legislation and taking it to its full effect, then uh, what would happen with the organisation the member just mentioned of Solid Energy, for example? Um, should that also then have a 75% rule? Um, should uh, Kiwi Rail have a 75% rule? Um, should uh, some of the other uh, state-owned enterprises have a 75% rule? Um, and so there's some in the Labor Party are nodding, but that's not what this bill does. Um, and so the question is um, whether that would apply to everything. And then even if it didn't apply to all those um, state-owned enterprises, that there may be a list that they want to have a 75% rule with, and there may be a list that they don't. Um, but uh, there's, a, there's a lack of consistency uh, there that I think that, um, that members of the public would be uh, very interested to find out why this um, state-owned enterprise um, subsidiary is seen as any different from solid energy or from, um, um, well, maybe history, but um, the thing is that the 75% rule um, is only being asked to be applied to one organisation, and what about something like Kiwi Rail? Would the 75% rule um, be applied to that? Is that what the member wants as well? And, that's, um, and if he doesn't, then, then that creates an inconsistency in legislation, um, which I'm sure that uh, members of the public wouldn't want to see this parliament um, have, as, have as an inconsistency um, in, in the way things have done. And then there's the, also the impacts of the bill. And um, you know, one of the big things that it, with a bank is always the potential that a bank runs into difficulties. And, um, and uh, we've seen that in the past with things like BNZ. And, um, you know, and when, when a bank gets into difficulties under the rules that are being set by this legislation, uh, there could be some quite difficult time frames involved. Um, for example, um, if the bank ran into difficulties and then you had to have a referendum, um, that would take a matter of months and that would, wouldn't be enough time for a bank to survive um, if it was in a matter of difficulty. Um, and also, if, um, if Parliament wasn't sitting. For example, um, if, the, if this, this bank got into trouble in December and Parliament wasn't coming back to February, um, what would happen then for those two months? The bank would essentially um, have a run on funds and go under and there would be no, um, there would be no recompense and basically the Crown would have to, um, to take that, that, um, that debt in the end um, and that would be an issue that would be, have to be considered. So, Mr Speaker, we understand what this member is trying to do here, but there's some issues that you've got to take into account. And the first one is that um, New Zealand Post itself, as its board, it has its own governance approach, 
and it's not for ministers to get involved in and direct that on a day-to-day -day basis. Second thing is that you need some consistency and, and, and there's some inconsistency in treatment of other SOEs and um, especially um, some organisations like Kiwi Rail and that. And, and I just don't know why the, the opposition um, feel that they they value Kiwi Bank more than Kiwi Rail, for example, and um, and will have this rule and round Kiwi Bank, but not Kiwi Rail. And you know, so um, so you know that they need to work through that inconsistency. Um, that sends the wrong message to corporate um, New Zealand or the SOEs in New Zealand as a particular whole. And then you've got that third issue with. If there are any problems with the bank, um, you know, and the bank may has to um, is required to meet certain capital funding regulations um, from the Reserve Bank, and um, and it relies on the market to do that. And if it, if it was unable to access to the market because um, there was a hamstring on the, the and its ability to make decisions or its ability to um, to actually be able to direct itself to to meet the needs that that organisation might find if it ever got into difficulty, uh, then that could be a compromising situation um, for the uh, parliament, but also for the members that um, are in that bill, uh, bank, and also um, it could compromise parts of our banking system, which nobody wants to do. So, so I think um, you know, when we look at this bill, it's, it, it, it may be seen as somewhat simplistic and just re re approaching one part of one SOE, um, but there are many follow-on effects, and um, and you know, look at those follow-on effects for the whole banking system. If a bank like Kiwi Bank did get into trouble and did fail, um, that is a big part of our banking system, and um, and you wouldn't want to have that follow-on effect. And and um, and if there's no ability for decisions to be made. Uh, how would it not affect? Well, there's no ability to decisions to be made because you'd have to wait for Parliament to resume to do that, or you'd have to, or you'd have to um, do a referendum, and a referendum is quite a timely process. And so that's um, that's the decisions that would be very difficult if there was a problem with capital raising or or um, funding of the the regulatory requirements of the bank. So, um, Mr. Speaker, uh, this is a an interesting bill in the sense that it has um, a particular bent to it, but I think that uh, you know, as a um, parliament, we need to consider these kinds of bills in a very open uh, way, but also consider um, you know what actually the implications are for other parts of the state sector and the state service. And um, in this case, um, there are some real issues around consistency. Um, it would be creating a precedent around a 75% vote, which has never been used in this. Um, part, it would, well, it hasn't been used in this parliament for a long time, if ever, and um, and that would create a, an element of consistency with other laws. Um, that would be an issue that would have to be uh, considered, and um, and then you've got the flow-on effects that should anything go wrong with the bank, um, how that would actually be dealt with um, in that sense. So, Mr. Speaker. Um, uh, look forward to the, the further discussion on this bill. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. Grant Robertson. Well, Mr. Speaker, I learned a couple of things there. Uh, the first is that